Hello everybody and welcome to this, my video on the Ondo Mark II 6x12 multi-format. You can tell it's the multi-format by the three sets of sighting lines on top and the multiple format windows on the back and the adjustable guides there for different formats. Ouch! And the very, very, very strong magnets. Okay, so the Ondo is a pinhole camera. It has no light meter and shutter speeds of anything you can do with your fingers. So it's ideally set for slow shutter speeds, but if you're using a really fast film, you can try to do very fast shutter speeds, but uh, you will get some, some shutter shake, some camera shake. The target market for these cameras is the hobbyist, artist, or creative user, and pinhole photography in general celebrates impreciseness. It celebrates a soft aesthetic. And that is something that this camera has in spades. Here are a couple of sample images that I've taken with it. And at some point I'll have enough photos to do an actual full-on review of this camera. This is made by Ondo, D-O-O. -O. I'm not sure what the D-O-O -O stands for. I assume it's some sort of business licensing term. It's made in Valenje, Slovenia. Uh, I apologize to all my Slovenian subscribers if I screwed up the city's pronunciation. It was made around 2014 to 2015. This is the Mark II. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, all the Mark IIs are out of production. Uh, as I'm filming this, the Mark III's are probably wrapping or completed production. And unfortunately, um, I don't think there'll be a Mark IV. I, I asked Elvis about that. This was preceded by the Mark I. It was concurrent with the rest of the Mark II cameras and it was followed by the Mark III's. Okay, so now as we do, we're gonna go through this camera and take a look at what all of the features are. Here on the top, we have the bubble level in the center and this is what you would use to make sure that your horizon is lined up correctly. These sets of lines are the sighting lines, six by 12, six by nine, six by six. And what you do is when you're standing behind the camera, you look down one of these lines and you'll get a pretty good idea of what's gonna be on the film. Here we have the film advance and take up rewind knobs. This is the one that you use to advance the film when you are taking a photo. I'm not sure why this arrow is this way unless this is used to give yourself some slack if you need to, which is this direction. But if you overshoot when you're advancing the film, you can just turn this one against the arrow to rewind the film slightly to get it the framing aligned properly. On the front of the camera, we have the shutter, which is this wood piece right here. And this metal peg, or wood peg, I'm not sure which, it looks like a wood peg, is the shutter stop. And what it does is prevent the shutter from going too far in either direction. There's the magnet that the shutter uh, uses to keep it from flopping around when it needs to be closed. And then the actual pivot for the shutter is something like right here. Here we have the pinhole. On the back of the camera, we have the logo, the company name, the 6x6 and 6x12 red window, and then the 6x9 red window. And then later in the video when I show you how to load film, I'll show you how to use those windows. Then we have uh, a couple of very, four very strong magnets here that hold the film back in place. Then we have these uh, removable bits that govern which format you're using. So if you take them both out, you're using six by 12. If you put them in the outer uh, set of slots, that's six by nine. And then this is six by six if you put them in the middle slots. If there is one failing in this camera, which there is, there is no place to store these when you're not using them. You, they, I mean, they kind of fit in here, not really. They don't, you can't really put them all the way in, but then you can't put film in there. Uh, ideally, this camera should have been made just a little bit wider so that when you shoot 6x12, these could slide in here. Because if you're going to shoot 6x12, you need to have a safe place to keep these so you don't lose them. Because if you lose them, then you are only shooting 6x12 and you lose the multi-format capabilities. And 
One, one thing, just on a, a personal note about this, the, the craftsmanship and the woodworking in these cameras is, j just across the whole product line, is absolutely fantastic. They did a really wonderful job in making these cameras. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load the film and I'm gonna show you how film is run through this camera. So we have in here an empty spool from the last roll of film that I used. We're gonna take that out by removing this knob here and we'll turn it over. And you can see that the magnets, if they're doing their job, catch those little metal bits. Here's the other spool. These are identical. It doesn't matter which side these go in. We're gonna take the empty film spool, drop it in there. Maybe that'll work, there we go. And then there's some magnets here that connect with the metal part here that help to make this uh, fit snugly and keep them from falling around. The, the use of magnets in this camera is really, good. well, in all of the undos, is really nice. So we're gonna take our new roll of film, gonna drop it in here, gonna repeat the same procedure, because now we can maneuver this to make it easier for us to get it. I'm gonna pull out the leader. Feed it into the empty spool and start turning. Make sure it's properly aligned. You don't want the paper bunching up on the top or bottom. Now we're gonna unroll it until these arrows line up with the magnets. Ow! We're gonna put the um, film back back on. Now, these are not in, so we're gonna be shooting six by 12. When you shoot six by 12, the way that I do it is that you'll advance it to one and then you'll advance it a little bit further to the first dot before two. And the reason for that is that the, the six by 12 is not really a standard format. If you line up the one here, you're lining it up for six by six, which means you're going to lose part of your frame over here. So I go a little bit past the six by six, and on most rolls of film, some of the inexpensive rolls of 120 are a little bit shorter and you'll have issues at the tail end. But on, on any of the, the, the Ilford and Kodak and Foma type films, this will work. You line up the, for six by 12, uh, the first dot after the number one. I'll, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do is because this is just a demonstration, I'm going to take the film back off. Now, in real life, film is one and done. You don't want to do this. This will ruin your film. But you can see as we advance, we have a series of dots here. And with this film back on, we'd be looking at these middle ones. So this is what the film looks like inside the camera if you advance to the number one. And if you were shooting six by six, which is about like this, you'd be in good shape. But because we need to go a little bit further, let me show you where the tape is. So the tape for this film is right here, okay? And what that means is if you shot six by 12 and you lined it up with the number one, your first frame would be cut off right about here. That's why we're gonna advance it past the tape and this first dot right here before two and after one is what we're gonna line up dang it, to have between this in the red window for six by six and six by 12. Then to take your photo, very simple, however long your exposure needs to be, there you go. Then you're going to advance your film to the big dot between the three and the four. So basically you have to count every other frame. If you just advanced it to the big dot before the three, every one of your frames would overlap. You would have no usable images whatsoever. You need to advance it all the way past. That's why you're gonna advance it to the big dot or the first dot at any rate before your four. So when you shoot six by 12, what you wanna do is use the dot before the even number as your frame index. When you shoot six by six, it's much easier. All you have to do is line up each number in this central window and you'll be good to go because this number right here is lined up for six by six. If you're gonna shoot six by nine, you're reading these numbers here and then you just have to line up each frame number 
in the six by nine window as you're uh, taking your photos and you'll be set for lining up your images. It's only six by 12 that's a little bit wonky that uses the large dot in front of the even numbers here. So that's the, the, the tip I can give you for your best method for lining up six by 12 images. Now we're gonna, you can see here, unlike most 120 cameras, you can rewind your film in this, which is good if you overshoot your alignment. Now, in real life, if you were going to use this, you'd, rewind, you'd advance the entire roll of film through the entire spool. You don't rewind 120, you just take it the entire way from start to finish, end up with an empty spool, and then move the empty spool over to the, to the take up spool area as I did at the very beginning of this, this part of the video. But we're, we're breaking the rules here because I need this film for other stuff. Okay. So that's how film works in this camera. And as I, I showed you, the, this, the, the different alignments for the different formats use these two, oh, come on, doodads, there we go. Okay, not really. There we go, like that, for six by six or six by nine. And um, I mean, theoretically, I guess you could do a weird sort of that's probably about a six by seven frame, but it's gonna be significantly softer and darker on this side of the frame than this one. And it's gonna be nearly impossible to accurately align your frames from shot to shot. Ow. Okay, so for the focusing lines, um, they're really easy to use. When you actually go to take your picture, it's a, it's a very simple process. In fact, let's talk about how to take a picture with this camera now. Basically, if you're standing behind it, you're gonna have it on a tripod. Ideally, if not, you can set it on a wall or a picnic table or something motionless. This is not a handheld camera because the shutter speeds we're talking about with this are in the one to five second to two minute range, depending on the type of film and the film speed that you're using. If you're using something like a Delta 3200, which I usually rate at about 1250 ISO, then you're looking at about a one eighth of a second exposure with this give or take, maybe a quarter. If you use something like a, um, uh, an Ilford 50, or a, a, the Pan F, you're looking at something like a 35 to 40 second exposure because of reciprocity failure. So this is a long duration exposure camera and basically what you're gonna do is get it leveled up. You're gonna look down one sighting line and then the other one for your chosen format and adjust it as you want to to get the scene in view. And then once you have everything lined up, the picture taking process is very simple. What you wanna do is very smoothly and gently open up the shutter and then about a second and a half before it's done, put it back into place. And you, you start at a second and a half before it's done, actually ideally pushing it down like this, because that lets you move it nice and slowly and avoid getting camera shake at the end of the exposure. Okay, great, we've just taken a photo. What about double exposures? Very, very easy on this camera. You simply don't advance the film and then take another exposure. That's the mechanics of it. The science behind the double exposure is that you need to cut the amount of light in half for each. And because this is in essence the most basic aperture priority camera, it has one aperture the size of the pinhole. You have to adjust your double exposure by using the shutter speed. So let's say you've got your light meter out and with your film and the, the, the the, the format size and everything, your pinhole calculator, for which there is a fantastic app for your smartphones, by the way, tells you that you need a 30 second exposure. With reciprocity failure, you know that you actually need about a one minute exposure. So we're gonna have to cut that in half and do two 30 second exposures. So you would take your first exposure, do whatever you need to do, and then take your second exposure. Very simple, very easy process, but 
because we are dealing with a pinhole, you will have to deal with reciprocity failure almost certainly when it comes to calculating both your single exposures and your multiple exposures. So that is everything about how to use the Ondo 6x12, the Ondo Mark II 6x12 multi-format camera. An incredibly beautiful, very capable, and very small for the size of images that it takes pinhole camera. Some things not to do with your camera. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car. The heat or the cold in your car can affect the wood and could cause it to warp, and you don't want that to happen because getting the wood to get to warp would be an issue. Also, don't let this sit in moisture or humidity or other things that can affect the lifespan of the wood that's made in this. Uh, so don't let it get wet. Don't take it out in the rain. If you do dry it off really well, put it in some rice or and, and re-wax it if you need to. And just remember that even though this is a pinhole camera and it's a wood camera, it is made with great care and great precision. And just because it's a pinhole doesn't mean it isn't capable of taking absolutely wonderful photos. It, it definitely is. So um, your Ondo Mark II 6x12 multi-format camera is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So this was it for my video on the Ondo Mark II 6x12. If, you have, if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that my videos are helpful and that I'm producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, post those below. I'm pretty good about checking those every day or two. If you have ideas or suggestions for future videos, and if I have the gear and the technical know-how, I'm more than happy to make those. And one last thing, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next camera video manual video or series.